All right, continuing on now with more about the thyroid. Moving on here. Okay, so we've seen this already before when we did the anterior pituitary hormones. You have, <clears throat> I'm not going to write on there. Okay. Um, as we talked about earlier, the hypothalamus makes a hormone called thyrotropin releasing hormone or TRH that travels to the anterior pituitary. It signals um, some of the cells in the anterior pituitary to secrete um, thyroid stimulating hormone or thyrotropin. That's another name for that. That travels through the bloodstream. Its target is those follicular cells of the thyroid gland, the ones that produce T3 and T4, those thyroid hormones. Okay, so TSH stimulates production of T3 and T4. And then here you are seeing the uh, negative feedback regulation. Once you have um, increasing levels of these, the hypothalamus can sense that, the anterior pituitary senses that, and it decreases production of TRH and TSH. Okay, so that makes sense because we want our T3 and our T4 levels to stay within a normal homeostatic range. So if you're up here with your T3 and your T4, you need less of these because if you keep making TRH and TSH, these levels are just going to keep going up and up and up. They're not going to ever go down. And you don't want to have uh, concentrations of T3 and T4 that are too high because what did we talk about? The effects of T3 and T4, well, what did we say those effects were? Increasing metabolism. So imagine if you are overproducing T3 and T4, your metabolism is really going to get jacked up. And uh, some people might think that would be pretty cool, but it's actually not when it happens <laughs> in people who are experiencing it. All right, and so that slide is, just has uh, some text written out for what I've mentioned a few minutes ago. Okay, homeostatic imbalances of thyroid hormone. Here are a few of those. These are pretty interesting. So you can have hyposecretion and you can have hypersecretion. Hypo means you have too little. Hyper, of course, means that you have too much. All right, so in adults, um, hyposecretion of T3 and T4 is called myxedema. And um, edema refers to swelling, one of the symptoms of low thyroid hormone production in adults can be a swelling of tissue, so that's where um, that name comes from. There are different types of hyposecretion that can occur. Um, one is due to lack of iodine, so if you don't have sufficient iodine in your diet, remember T3 and T4, T3 is triiodothyronine, T4 is tetraiodothyronine, so you need the iodo part. If you don't have sufficient iodine in your diet, you're not going to manufacture T3 and T4. So now if we think about, net, let's go let's back up over here for a second. Why would that lead to a goiter? A goiter is an enlarged thyroid. Okay, and so why would that happen? If we move back over here and we look at regulation. All right, so when we look at this map here, um, you have to have T3 and T4 to have negative feedback on the anterior pituitary and the hypothalamus. Okay, so if you don't have sufficient iodine in your diet, you're going to have inadequate levels of T3 and T4. So guess what? You lose your negative feedback regulation. T3 and T4 are not available in sufficient amounts to tell the hypothalamus to quit making TRH and the anterior pituitary to quit making TSH. So uh, because of that, you wind up with excessive or continuously high levels of those two hormones. And what do those hormones do? TSH tells the follicular cells 
in your thyroid to produce more thyroglobulin. Remember that, that's the glycoprotein, that precursor, that immature form of T3 and T4 that gets stored in the follicles. So TSH tells those follicular cells, keep making more, keep making more, keep making more, and, um, but you never wind up with any fully mature T3 and T4 because you don't have any iodine. So you keep making this thyroglobulin precursor and the thyroid gland just gets bigger and bigger and bigger because of that. And that's what we call a goiter. A goiter is an enlarged thyroid gland. That's not the only thing that can lead to uh, a goiter. You can also get goiters with hypersecretion um, or goiters can, goiters can be associated with hypersecretion as well. So there are different types of goiters. In an infant, if you don't produce enough T3 and T4, um, that can lead to a condition called cretinism, which is a, a form of mental retardation that occurs. That makes sense. I mean, when you are a child, your brain is still developing. Okay, sorry, I had a little technical glitch there. Um, makes sense if you have, if T3 and T4 uh, control metabolism. You need, when you are a child, your metabolism has to be higher. Everybody knows the kids have a higher metabolism. That because, that's because they need to break down more nutrients to make more ATP fuel to power all of the growth that they go through. So it makes sense if you're an infant when you're still undergoing this brain development, if you don't have sufficient T3 and T4, you're not going to be able to generate the ATP that you need to uh, power growth throughout the body, including in the brain. So that can lead to a condition called cretinism, which is a type of mental retardation. All right. Um, Another type of hypersecretion, I'm sorry, not another type, um, hypersecretion rather than hypo. Uh, there are different conditions that can result in this. Um, one of the most common types is Graves' disease. And I am likely going to assign you some, um, a case study where you'll have to investigate some of these conditions a little bit more thoroughly, but um, Graves' disease is a pretty uh, common type of hyperthyroidism. It is an autoimmune disease, which means the uh, your own immune system winds up um, producing antibody type weapons which attach to the follicles of the thyroid, those follicular cells, and what happens is they mimic TSA, so your immune system is generating these antibody weapons against your own thyroid that mimic the function of TSH, and so they stimulate overproduction of thyroid hormones because of that. You produce too much T3 and T4, your levels go up too high, and um, this leads to a number of different symptoms that are associated with excessive T3 and T4. Um, exophthalmos is one of those. You see that written right there. That's the bulging of the eyes that can occur with a Graves' disease and some other uh, thyroid type conditions. That's actually due to overgrowth of um, tissues, connective tissues behind the uh, eyeballs, behind in your eye sockets they thicken and cause the eyeballs to protrude out. Heat intolerance, anxiety, that makes sense if you think about it. If your metabolism is jacked up, we said heat is a byproduct of cellular respiration, so you're gonna feel hot all the time if you have excessive T3 and T4 being produced. Weight loss would be another symptom. You're busting through your nutrients, you're breaking them down super, super rapidly, so that can lead to uh, weight loss as well. Anxiety. Um, nervous system can be overly active. Your, your, your cells become overly active when T3 and T4 are produced at high levels, so that can lead to anxiety as well. 
There are other thyroid hormone uh, disorders. One that I would like you guys to um, investigate as well is Hashimoto's disease. That is a type of hyposecretion that can occur. It's also another kind of autoimmune disease, but it's different from Graves' disease. Hashimoto's is a hyposecretion problem, whereas Graves' disease is a hypersecretion uh, problem. So it would be good for you to uh, look up some information about Hashimoto's and, and how that differs from Graves' disease. All right, and then this is a this is a pretty interesting slide of a, a woman here, a picture here of a woman with an extremely large iodine deficiency goiter. So yes, that is her thyroid gland that has become that large, and again, it's because if you don't have sufficient thyroid hormones but due to a lack of iodine in the diet, you're just going to keep making more and more TRH and TSH. TSH tells the follicles, keep making thyroglobulin, keep making thyroglobulin, and your thyroid just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Iodine deficiency goiters are not a problem in the United States anymore. Uh, because uh, when one of the key reasons is because it's mandated that we add iodine to our, or we have iodized salt available for purchase, and that's what most of us use. Also, in the um, the uh, food items that we purchase in grocery stores and so forth, when salt is included as an ingredient, that's almost always iodized salt. But in parts of the world where maybe there's not a lot of iodine in the soil, so it's not taken up into the vegetables and fruits that the population eats. Um, you still have there still are problems in some parts of the world with of the world with iodine insufficiency. Okay, finally I'm going to squeeze a little bit of info in here about calcitonin, that is the other thyroid hormone. And again, it's not made by the follicular cells, it's made by the parafollicular or the C cells. Uh, C for calcitonin. Those are the cells that are sitting in between in the filler spaces between the follicles and the thyroid. And uh, you hear a little bit about calcitonin over in Biology 201. In humans, there's actually no known physiological role. In some other types of mammals, it triggers calcium to be stored in the osseous tissues, so it's involved in calcium homeostasis. Now, if you give it to a person, it can be given in some cases to uh, like people who have, um, in some cases it's been used as an osteoporosis drug because what it will do when you give it at higher than normal doses, it inhibits the osteoclasts in the osseous tissues. Remember, those are your bone dissolving cells and it stimulates calcium uptake and incorporation into the bone matrix. So you increase bone production. It can help increase bone mass. However, at, at the normal levels it's made in human beings, it does not seem to have a known physiological role. And some of our other mammal relatives it does play a role in, in helping to maintain calcium levels in the body and uh, in the body fluids. All right, and then uh, mentioning calcium there, that is a good little segue into lecture number 11, which will be about parathyroid hormone, or PTH, which is a hormone made by the parathyroid glands. And remember, para means next to or kind of side by side, so these are glands which are little tiny um, itty bitty bean shaped glands that are sitting on the posterior side of your thyroid and uh, this hormone is the key one involved in helping us maintain proper calcium levels in our body fluids and hopefully you learned about that when you study the skeletal system in a and p1 but if not we'll have a rehash in the next video lecture on this hormone <laughs>